Welcome to NTP's Peace question of the week. My name's Mark. This week we've received a call concerning brake tests, asking why they were being told that their brakes were not good enough when a recent roller brake test actually showed a pass against each of the braking systems. Now, this is a very much misunderstood topic, and depending on who you speak to, it's very much open to personal interpretation. Now, on the face of it, if your roller brake test report shows a service brake pass, secondary brake pass, parking brake pass, then it legally has passed the test. However, this does not tell the whole story. Now, according to the Guide to Maintaining Road Worthiness, a vehicle or trailer should get a minimum of four roller brake tests a year. One of these can be the annual MOT. But bear in mind that this is a minimum and it should be considered whether more frequent roller brake tests would be beneficial to maintaining the standard of roadworthiness of any fleet. Best practice may be every inspection or maybe alternate inspections. Now, have you ever actually looked at the roller brake test in detail the report? Briefly, let me explain what it shows. The test report is split into three sections. The first being the vehicle details, the second is the performance of each axle on the vehicle or trailer, and the third is the test summary. Now, in section one, the vehicle details, it should be checked to make sure that all the information is correct, including the Department for Transport number, which should match the one on the placing certificate, and that the maximum design weights on the report are correct. Then moving on to section two, this is the brake performance. And there's five different headings to check over in here. The first three columns, which are bind, time lag, and ovality, will show a pass or a fail against the axles. The next column, the fourth one, in balance, will show a value in kilograms along with a percentage. Now, this is the first trip hazard, in that the percentage will show how evenly that axle is braking. The higher the percentage, obviously the higher the imbalance. An imbalance of more than 30% will fail its test. An imbalance of 29%, let's say, will pass the test. But in real terms, an imbalance of 29% represents a serious issue that requires rectification. But without understanding the report, it's often overlooked. Now the last column is the max force. This also shows a value in kilograms. It's the maximum braking effort at each wheel. If your wheels lock whilst testing, an L will be displayed against the readings. If more than half the wheels on, a, on an individual braking system lock, then the efficiency test will be passed. Wheels that lock are good, often considered to be the best outcome. But here lies the next issue, in that the vehicle can gain a pass through locking, even though the performance of the test means that the test value of the inspection does not meet the pass value necessary. Finally, the last section, has the vehicle passed? Let's assume that on paper, according to the inspection, even if it's an annual MOT test, that the brakes have achieved a pass. That's good news. Ask an MOT tester and they'll tell you, you pass, off you go. However, there may be underlying issues behind the pass received. And that is where the personal interpretation comes in. As if DVSA look through your paperwork, your pass on paper is not necessarily sufficient in their eyes. We've got a difference of interpretation there. This is why it's vital that all great test reports are looked at carefully and any issues are rectified in a timely manner. Don't just take a pass on paper as being good enough. Now, reading a roller brake test report is not easy, not something that I can adequately go into in detail here in the video. DVSA have a blog called Moving On, you may have seen it, and have recently re released advice on how to read brake tests and what action to take. It's very clear and pretty easy to understand, it's a good guide. So search for Moving On blog or Moving On DVSA in your web browser to find it. I hope it helps. Thanks for watching. Um, I hope it's helped to highlight that not everything written in black and white is actually black and white. Often there's a little grey thrown in there to muddy the waters. If you wish to add comments below, please do. Don't forget to click like and subscribe so that you know when more useful and informative videos are released by NTP. See you soon. Take care.